Hello, everybody. This is Bart Bettiga from Tile Letter Magazine, publisher of Tile Letter Magazine, executive director of the National Tile Contractors Association. And I have uh, with me today two, two guests that I've known for a long time, but they're in a new venture, and I'm really excited to, to let everybody know about what's going on. I have with me Mike Ward uh, and Jed Durbin, uh, and they're with uh, Portobello America. And uh, rather than me try to give their titles, I'm going to ask both of them to introduce themselves and uh, tell me what their titles are. And then we're going to talk about Portobello America, which has some really exciting uh, information and news coming up here in 2022. Mike, I'll start with you. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your job with Portobello. Okay. My name is Mike Ward, um, as Bart said, and I'm the vice president of sales for Portobello America. You know, my job is to obviously established distribution in the United States and in Canada for our new factory project that we'll be talking a lot about here this afternoon. Great. And Jed, how about you? Yeah, I'm Jed Durbin. Uh, with, um, I'm the VP of Manufacturing and Outsourcing with Portobello America. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to, let's talk about Portobello. I'll go to you first, Mike. Uh, for those that don't know uh, much about Portobello, uh, Portobello is a, a Brazilian uh, factory. So tell us a little bit about the factory in Brazil, and then we'll talk about uh, what's happening uh, there in uh, Baxter. Yeah, so Portobello America is going to be celebrating its 43rd year in Brazil. We're the, the largest uh, ceramic tile and porcelain manufacturer in Brazil with two production units, one in the south of the country, the porcelain factory, and one in the north of the country, which is our pointer factory, which is a, a red body ceramic factory. But like I said, we're the largest producer of ceramic tile in Brazil in terms of dollar turnover. Um, we go to market um, in several different ways. We have a distribution or home center division. There's not really the traditional distributor in Brazil, but we have a home center division that we sell. Um, we have a commercial division, which we call the projects. And then we operate 150 Portobello shops throughout the entire entirety of the country. So, you know, we, we service all of the channels, you know, so much so that we're actually reaching the, the end consumer in Brazil. So we feel like that that's a, a strength that we have there that we're able to, to bring to the United States, not necessarily in servicing the end consumer, but understanding what the end consumer needs in terms of style design and logistics. So uh, I, I don't know if this is you, Mike or Jed, but what, what led to the decision to make this uh, significant investment. I think I read somewhere about $160 million. And, I, and when did you start uh, in, in production? Maybe that goes to you, Jed. Uh, and, uh, but uh, you know, basically what led to the decision when you've already had a successful company in Brazil and you've got a pretty strong export program here into the US and Canada? Well, in the beginning, you know, it's about four years ago, um, we started the we started the process of strategy and and uh, and how to go to market. Uh, a lot of it is due to uh, just diversification of our parent company in Brazil uh, to be in the U.S. They they were in the U.S. in the '90s and most of the and through I think 2009 until the recession hit, and then uh, they decided to come back in. Um, a lot because of opportunity, as, as everyone on this call is very aware of, we're, we're about 70% import product. So there's a lot of opportunity for domestic produced product. And uh, so that was more of the reason to push in and, uh, and go on and, and put in an establishment here, a factory. So why Baxter? Tell me, I know that this is uh, the Tennessee, Kentucky, area has become kind of a hotbed for tile. What, what made you select Baxter? Uh, and tell us a little bit about that process. Right, we've, we've got the, you've got the I-40 corridor that goes east to west uh, in Tennessee and the raw materials are basically along that I-40 corridor. Um, the clays, all the ball clays are in the, uh, the west part of Tennessee and Typically, uh, well, we have felspar in Spruce Pine, North Carolina, but right now a lot of the felspar is, is being uh, used from Turkey. And there are a couple of different ports for that, one in Nashville and, and down in the, the Chattanooga area on the rivers. Tell us about, uh, I'll stick with you, Jed, on this. Uh, so when will the plant become operational? Uh, when's the grand opening is gonna be? 
And then maybe you could tell me a little bit about the plans on like what type of products are you going to be producing in, initially, uh, 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 you know, porcelain tile, uh, non-porcelain tile, uh, size formats, just maybe a little bit about those plans. Right. Well, we have, uh, right. It's a, it's a, the building is, is, is set to be done in two phases. The first phase being two kilns. Um, and then in the, in the first building, we have two phases of equipment. So the first phase will be a, a 200 meter kiln, um, which we will be able to produce. We're basically gonna go from 12 by 24 and we can press up to uh, 24 by 48 on the first kiln. The second kiln will be a larger, uh, with larger presses that we'll be able to go up to 48 by 48. Everything we have capability of full polish rectify um, for, for all the product. And then also we'll have a, a special pieces uh, plant that's, that's integrated with, within the facility to produce small items such as two by six up to, you know, even four by 24, that kind of size items that are uh, more special or boutique type wall things and, and accent items. What about like uh, large format panels, Jed, or uh, thicker panels or porcelain panels? Is some of that be outsourced or I know you're also in charge of outsourcing. So, you know, maybe talk to me a little bit about other things you'll, you'll do to fill in around what you'll be able to produce here in the U.S. Right. Well, and actually we have partners here in the U.S. that we'll continue to utilize and uh, work the strengths of our company, so to speak. Uh, within the U.S., the outsourcing for large panel, we actually have Continua Plus at Brazil and our Tajucas factory down in the south part of Brazil. So, uh, and, and that's where we'll source the large panels. In the second building phase, um, that's when we'll start to consider, you know, a large panel program uh, domestically produced. So will you have large uh, warehouse facility there and bring everything into Baxter and then ship and then distribute out in full truckloads to your clients? How will that work? That's correct. We'll have, we have a, a DC that we're building at the same time uh, off the end of the uh, sorting lines uh, that we'll be able to house everything. And then what we outsource also comes to that DC and then we ship you know, directly to distributors and, and projects. So Mike, let's talk about sales. What changes here for, you've got existing distributors that have been uh, importing Portobello tile. Now you have a domestic facility being built. What's the strategy around the sales of uh, what's anything changing or tell us about how your distributor clientele is going to work or uh, work within this new structure? Yeah, nothing, nothing should change as far as a strategy goes. The, the strategy from the very beginning was to establish, you know, first a sales team, um, then a product portfolio that was made up of products that, that we manufacture in Brazil and that um, we partner here in the United States with some other manufacturers so that we can bring made in the USA product to those, those customers and then stock them heavily in the United States. And then go out and, and, and hopefully partner with some of the, the better and best distributors throughout the United States. And over the last couple of years, we've, we've been successful in doing so. There's, there's certainly, um, you know, a real appetite for, for domestic suppliers today. Um, there has been for, for the last year or two. Um, and, you know, what will change when we have the factory is that we'll, we will be producing most of what we're selling. But like Jed said, we will still be outsourcing some product, you know, both locally and at our, our Brazilian factory. Um, so that it should be a seamless transition from what we're doing today for when the, the factory opens. What about us? What about your sales team? Anything changing around uh, who you're putting together for your sales team and talk about uh, what you do to develop uh, th uh, that uh, as a vice president, director of sales? So our, our sales team is, is broken up into different regions. So we have, um, you know, a North region sales manager, a Southern region sales manager, a Western region sales manager. My North um, regional is based in New Jersey. My Southern is based in Pompano. And my Western regional sales manager is in the uh, San Diego area. So it covers Southern California. So everybody is strategically located, again, setting up for, um, 
you know, dis, you know, independent dist distribution in those areas. I also have a key account sales manager and next year we will be adding a commercial sales manager so that we can develop the commercial side of the business for our distribution base. So, you know, there will be, you know, hopefully pulling through some business that, that we can, we can sell through our distri our distributors. So everything flows through independent distribution, but you are ramping up to work be because of some advantages that you know you have domestically and with having product available domestically, you're ramping up uh, on the specification side, architectural sales, commercial sales, national account type sales. Is that right? That's right. It's a strength of the Portobello group in general. We work very closely with the architect there, so much so that, that we have a group of architects that we, we take yearly somewhere in the in the world and develop products based on the architecture and geography of that certain area, whether it's Iceland or Berlin. Um, so we're very comfortable in working with the, the architect and designer, and we're gonna take that you know, strength that we have there and, and bring it to the United States. When you're up and running uh, and fully operational and Jed's got you delivering all the product that you need, what would you say to your, uh, to your sales team? What are your, what are your advantages? What are advantages of Portobello America compared to competitors? Well, I, I think our advantage is going to be, you know, when you look at who we're competing against, you know, let's just take the tile industry. We're competing against a 70% of the imports, you know, right? 70% of the market are imports. So we're going to be domestically produced. So I think that that gives us a, a big advantage over our, our competitors. When you are import competitors, when you look at us domestically, I think we're going to have a broader product uh, portfolio, you know, from wall tile to mosaics to floor tile to what we, what we call our extra large portfolio from 24 by 48 to 48 by 48. But I, I think that, you know, in today's environment, um, as far as supply and tile goes, the, the, the market is big enough for all of us. And I, I think our real competitor probably is the, the LVT, exactly. not necessarily for us to focus on, you know, our other tile competitors. Well, we look forward to working with you to, to help promote and train uh, 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 installers and, and help people to sell tile because we, that, like you said, we have to compete with competitive products. Uh, Jed, back to you. Everybody talks about green. It's a color, you know, but it's also about it's the it's about sustainability uh, in your plant. Uh, it, what are the plans related to, uh, you know, uh, life cycle sustainability of making a green production facility, uh, acquiring certifications, maybe joining Tile Council, you know, as a domestic partner uh, and, and on Green Squared or any of that. Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. We're we are already a uh, a member of TCNA, um, and an active member of of uh, the manufacturers there, um, because of the of, you know we're already building the factory. We've committed the money and everything, so the the uh, the, the tile council accepted us in uh, about a, I guess a year and a half ago, um, and then we are also active with all of the lead uh, aspects of, of tile and, and just the, the green space, uh, so to speak. The process and everything we're doing within the facility will be uh, a closed loop. Everything will be recycled uh, within the factory. Nothing will be uh, taken away from the factory. All of the engineering for gas lighting and, and what have you are, are all being engineered with the most efficient uh, newest technology, LED lighting and, and what have you, uh, the most efficient burners and those types of things for kilns and, and spray dryers. So we will be getting certified for Green Squared also. Um, we just, you know, obviously have to have the facility to, to start that process. Um, and as far as EPD goes, uh, the Environmental Product Declaration, we, we are already part of this um, in that we, we already know what our body composition is. It's already been studied and, and ready. So uh, that was actually turned in with the study and, and we paid for our portion of that uh, to, be, to be included with the EPD that will be coming out. And I think it's another year or so from now or, or sometime in 2022, um, the new EPD will, will come out with the supporting manufacturers. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I, I, you know, my last question is is just just from a curiosity standpoint. Uh, 
what makes what goes into uh, uh, the decisions of what designs and products to uh, to develop? Uh, is are you working with the, a team out of Brazil? Are you uh, are you bringing in design uh, type people into Baxter? Uh, when when you talk about wood look porcelain, stone look porcelains, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, any other new looks, uh, octagons, hexagons, uh, formats, large formats, rectangular. What what for our you know a lot of our our, our uh, watchers and subscribers are are contractors and they always have like you know uh, input or you know about product and uh, they're always worried about sizing, warpage, calibration, things of that nature. But what goes into the decision of what you're going to produce and compared to the Brazilian market versus the Mexican market versus the U.S. market? Just curious. Yeah, that's it. Well, there's a lot actually that goes into it. Um, as Mike alluded to a while ago, where we take the architects around the, 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 the world uh, to, to look and, and come up with new trends or, or, or even identify trends or current trends. Um, we take that information. We also look at the U.S. market and trends, uh, what we're seeing from Mike and his team, uh, the input they give us. We, we have a, a, a group, a team within our group that uh, we study the, the market, we study the trends, the colors, the, what, what colors uh, people are identifying with right now. And it's not so much the colors of the floor, it's more the colors of, of a of a design that a designer architect would do with the exterior and interior with furniture and what have you. So we have to come up with colors that, that create a good base for these colors to blend with and to be timeless uh, so that those things can be changed uh, through time and still match or coordinate with the different color schemes that designers would, would bring into the, to the home or the office space. Uh, so there's there is a lot that goes into it, even even with sizes. You know, right now the smaller pieces are coming back again, and um, obviously the and the larger sizes are are at the same time being more popular. So um, obviously, diff two different uses. The smaller items are usually walls and accents, or you know, like wet floors and what have you. Um, with the larger units being more appealing. For, for the larger spaces and in, uh, in homes and commercially. So Mike, uh, just a, a couple of uh, follow up or final type questions. First on a supply, mm -hmm. because you're working with independent distributors, you don't have to, Portobello doesn't have to worry about uh, installation materials, tools, things of that nature. Is that correct? It's just, a t you're just going to be supplying tile. Uh, yeah, we're just going to be supplying tile, I, you know, I'm sure we have to, to worry about it in, in terms of when we have the large format tiles, I, I think that we will be more involved, you know, at the factory level in terms of education, sure. um, how best to install those things, but we won't be selling those items. Right. Okay. And then you mentioned earlier that we have to, you know, you'd be a little bit concerned always with competitive products such as LVT. We, we're, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I always look to see where LVT is gaining market share. What do you at Portobello see as opportunity? Uh, uh, some areas perhaps uh, where we can sell tile where we've not traditionally been great at selling tile. What do your sales team and you guys talk about there? Like I, for, for instance, I look at exterior living spaces, patios, decks, or exterior walls as an example, but what do you guys see as opportunity moving forward? We see the exterior space as something that that's very interesting and, and not necessarily just for the 2CM products. Right. I, I think that as more porcelain is being used outside 2CM, they're seeing opportunities to use other thickness uh, tiles outside. So that definitely is, is a trend. I, I think that using larger sizes, not just on the floor, but on the walls, Agreed. You know, towers, fireplaces, you know, really anywhere is becoming more and more of a trend. And I, and I think that the conversation that LVT brought up, the waterproof conversation, is really an opportunity for us because their system isn't and ours is. Yeah, even though, even though, their system claims to be waterproof, and we, we we always talk about waterproof. You know, the waterproofing is is truly the assembly installation, and uh, and uh, and uh, we we definitely feel we uh, we can do a better job of promoting our products uh, out there to the to the consumer in that way. But uh, uh, thank you so much. I think uh, this is great, and uh, I just want to 
uh, uh, wish you all, uh, uh, you know, success in this new venture. It's great to see uh, from a, a 35 year tile uh, veteran. It's great to see the reinvestment uh, of a lot of factories into the U.S. Uh, uh, in building plants here in the U.S. I think a, a healthier mix of import to domestic uh, availability uh, will be good for the industry and uh, and good to help us continue to promote tile. We will always import tile, but it's nice to have some, some strong domestic partners and players uh, here in the U.S. So congratulations to Portobello uh, from Brazil, Portobello America, and uh, I'm going to wish both of you nothing but success in this venture. Thanks, Bart. Appreciate you having us on. Great. Appreciate it. You've been listening to uh, Mike Ward and Jed Durbin of Portobello America, and this has been Tile Letter Magazine. Thank you for watching.